Howdy everyone. Desert Horizons, AZ off-grid, unplugged RV. Um, this is going to be as comprehensive as I can do a video on my solar setup. I'm going to try and do this all in one take, so I, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but you'll notice i got nine panels set up on my awning. Only eight of them are hooked up. The last one down there doesn't work for whatever reason anymore. It doesn't put out any juice, so it's been disconnected. Um, but yeah, these are the eight solar panels. They're all hooked up in series. So I only have one cable coming from the second to the end, one down there going down, and one from here going down to the batteries. So that's what series is. So now I'll go downstairs and show you what it's like down there. Hey puppy. I know it's a little hot out here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Get some water. Get some water. Well, that's Ruger. It's supposed to be a hundred and I think it's six today. So yeah, he was sitting there underneath the shade, so he's going back under there. That's his favorite place to hang out. He's got plenty of room under there. Stand up, walk around, whatever he wants to do. Alright. Now I'm back downstairs, and this is the uh, the main battery compartment. I've got uh, four batteries here. These are all six volt batteries, so these are hooked up. However, it works to make them into 12 volt batteries, whether it's series or parallel, I couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, I got these two four batteries here that are hooked up. This is one 12 volt battery. That's another 12 volt, or whichever way it works. Actually, I think this is one, and that's one. And then I got the other two hooked up via these cables, the two coach batteries that you have to have with an RV. I tried figuring out a way to do it without them, it's just, it won't work. So, those are, that's my battery setup. These are all Trojan T105s. Uh, and I forgot to mention that the solar panels on the roof are each 100 watts. So I have a total of 800 watts coming in and six batteries. I was always asking people, how many, is it, does it make any difference? I mean, suppose I had, here in Arizona, I was thinking I could have four panels and 20 batteries. What would the problem be? And everybody says, oh, no problem, no problem, you can do it. Well, you could, but the panels would not develop enough juice to charge the batteries. It would be a trickle charge all the time, and you'd end up burning the batteries out. Well, I hope like hell with this wire and this wire hooked up to the front two batteries that it's not burning them out, but it is what it is. Um, I've got some, I'm going to order some cables uh, to connect from here to the, the, the coach, but I haven't ordered them yet. I'm trying to put a big enough order together to make it worthwhile. Uh, all right, now I'm going to go inside. All right, I'm back inside in my uh, power wall. This is where the uh, inverter, the charge controller, the fuses and all that stuff come up either out of the floor or wherever they're going to or from the roof where the, the panels are. But this is a, a 3,000 watt, or, sorry, a 2,000 watt, 4,000 watt surge uh, Ames power inverter. Uh, they make bigger ones, fatter ones, but those are with the, the uh, a charge, uh, a battery charger on them. And I didn't need a battery charger because I already got one built into the coach. And uh, here's my midnight solar uh, charge controller. Uh, yes, they put in a total of 4.1 kilowatt hours. So I don't know how by, I think it was by 1215, I'd already burned through 2.2. So I don't know how I did that. <laughs> um, and then I got these uh, two switches here. The one on the right goes from the solar panels to the charge controller. And the one on the left goes from the charge controller to the batteries and then the batteries come back up through the fat cables which was one of my complaints about this particular setup they send me this fat cable which is fine beautiful but then they send me a fuse that it doesn't fit in there's no way I could fit that one gauge wire into a four gauge receptacle it just doesn't work so, I don't understand the point. I guess maybe there is a point. I don't know. But yeah, that was my complaint on them. 
But uh, that's my whole solar setup. That's everything I got. The eight panels on the roof, the six batteries down below, and this all inside. And what that is all powering is that TV takes 25 watts. I've got a nebulizer thing down there. I got a, I have no idea what is that takes. Um, that's a 10 watt laptop computer. That's a 125 watt roughly uh, home built computer. I have a video on YouTube of I'm putting that together. It's got a Ryzen 7 chip in it. It works beautiful. Um, it powers that. I also have this uh, uh, evaporative portable air cooler. That sucks between 93 watts, 115 watts, or 138 watts on low, medium, and high. It's rated at 160 watts, so I guess I got a good one. Uh, and then I also power for cooking. I've got a little electric thing. It only sucks one watt. Doesn't make any difference what setting, what setting I have on here. Look, it just barely clicked on it. It's barely turned it on low. 850 watts. So I'll turn it off, and it goes right back down again. So even when you turn on low, let me kick on to 850 watts, and it'll turn off after a few seconds and back on. But it doesn't it doesn't work like a space heater, 250 watts, 500 watts, 750 watts, so on. Uh, and then back here I have several vampire loads, like a, a timer there for the refrigerator. Um, I have that set for as close to 12 hours a day. The refrigerator working uh, seems to work very well at that. Uh, just before it clicks off at the end of the day, the sodas in there are just getting slushy frozen, which is the way I like them. So that's perfect. Then it shuts off until 6:30 the next morning. So, and then I also charge up my cigarettes right there, and I got a lamp right th right there uh, that I use, and then I have a fan there that I leave running all night long. Even when it's windy out and the, and the, the windows are open, that fan's still blowing. <laughs> so, and, and I got, you know, batteries charging up and lights up the wazoo. I got a light there. I got a, a light there. I got a light there. I got one right there. I got two right there. I got one right there. I got one right up above my head. I got one more, right, two more right there. Got another two right there, uh, another two right there, and I got that one there, and then that one there. And I also have one in the bathroom. So, uh, the other day, or last weekend actually, it got really cloudy here. And I knew it was coming, so what I did was I turned on the propane refrigerator a day ahead of time. Uh, and waited a full day, and then loaded everything up on the morning it got cloudy. Turned off the electric refrigerator, switched to the small TV, which only takes 25 watts. The big TV takes about 70. Um, I'll usually run that during the day, and the small one at night if I'm watching TV at night, which I normally don't. TV gets turned off at 6 o'clock, and I go sit outside and enjoy the evening. Um, I do have my neighbors moving in there full-time permanent. But, but yeah, like I guess it's 800 watts uh, the other day. When it was cloudy, it actually said that it was come putting in 800 watts, 800. I didn't think that was possible. But it was right after a rainstorm, so those panels were clean. Man, there's my chart for what the you know, what the battery charge means as far as, you know, like down here in the upper right corner, it says 13.9 volts. Well, that's because it's charging and nothing's being used at the moment other than the vampire loads the, well, the refrigerator's on. So yeah, it'll charge, it'll run all of that stuff, and I'll still have plenty of battery left at the end of the day to run that fan all night long. So it's like, this is a perfect setup in here for me. So that's how 800 watts can handle whatever you need to do. Hopefully this all made sense. <laughs> all right, take care. Again, this is a Desert Horizons AZ Off-Grid Unplugged RV. Bye.